I'd like to open a bunch of mail, but I'm kind of out of room. Wiring and tools, they're just laying aside. There's just piles of stuff everywhere. I've already occupied the floor space all around. I've had to temporarily create an overflow workspace in the computer room. And it's also getting out of hand. I bought some metal shelf rails and brackets to put above the workbench so I can just put scrap pieces of 2x4 for now and at least get some of the stuff organized and up off the work surface. I got all that junk cleaned off, the heavy items, the tiny parts. Now I just need to keep going and try to get those shelving racks up. So I have enough brackets for three shelves. Each bracket itself should hold 50 pounds, so each shelf should do 100 pounds. But I don't plan to load it up with heavy equipment, just parts and boxes mostly, or lightweight equipment. Like those modern oscilloscopes and function generators are less than 10 pounds, I think. Compared to 50 pounds or so for some older equipment. Alright, the metal shelf brackets are on the wall. I just need some scrap wood to cut and make shelves now. My freezer is in the middle of all this construction rubble and now it's also becoming a workbench. Well, I need spare wood for shelves. I got lots of that. Let's cut some strips. I have a lot of spare 2x4 right now and some of it's a little bit warped, but just picking through, this is a good way to repurpose it for now. Oh, Einstein, what have you gotten yourself into now? So the shelving is up, and I don't know if I'm going to leave Einstein there for now. I was also kind of worried, is the weight of the 2x4 going to be a lot for the shelf? Because three pieces per shelf started feeling heavy, but the three pieces combined are 18 pounds per shelf. And if I can support 100 pounds per shelf, and I don't plan to load it up a lot, should be fine. So, let's get stuff back on there. Alright, I got the shelves loaded up with stuff. Some test equipment is up on the shelf now, off the bench. Soldering workstation on the right, on the desk itself. Power supply on the left, the monitor and one part storage tray fit in between. Some parts and a work surface are available. So, let's give this mailbag another try. I haven't had this much desk space available since March when I first set this table up. Let's get to it. And we can start with electronics quantity one. Oh, the keypad I've been waiting for. Oh yeah. And there it is. So we have a 4x4 four four keypad with a header. It's got tactile buttons on there so you can tell when you've pressed them. And I just want to try some keyboard matrix experiments and play around. Maybe I can come up with a project where I can actually use this for data entry. I don't know if I'd have a use for all the buttons, but I could always put a sticker over some of these and change the functions. But having all the digits to go with whatever numbers I want, I can maybe enter some digits and then press enter or something like that. 4x4 matrix, 16 key, membrane switch, keypad, keyboard for Arduino, AVR, pick, arm. 99 cents from CA Electronics 8. The connector has 8 pins at 2.54 millimeter pitch. And those 8 pins are essentially one for each row and one for each column. So you can set one high or low, whatever, and read the other and figure out where you're at when you're pressing them together. You'll basically close a contact between a row and a column when you press a switch. So if I press the 7 key, I'll be creating a short between row 3 and column 1. This took four weeks to get here. So yeah, I'm glad that finally came. And something else came called 3C Accessories, which I have no idea the meaning of till I get in there and check it out. Oh, spudgers! 
Okay, so I think there's three spudger tools in here. Well, this one is the same as this one. A little bit shorter. You can never have too many of these. I use these as my pointing device. But they're also good for prying and there's a sharp tip and a flat blade tip, so very useful it has been and I'm glad to have extras now. Oh, this one's got its own special case. This one's a bit pointy and this one's more fully rounded, but just metal spudger when you need to pry into something. Plastic might not do it. I'm gonna have to get a spudger bin where I can put all these so when I do need it, I can take a look at all the different ones I have and choose the right one. And here's another one. It's got a wider flat blade. It's a little bit hooked, it looks like. Maybe that'll help you dig into something to pry it out. So, spudgers! And this one comes with a five-star rating. Three-in-one set of rubber grip metal spudger and nylon, nylon plastic opening screen pry kit. So they're trying to say you can open phones and tablets with these. Oh, it looks like I got this at auction for 82 cents from HMT Tool. And there's the person using one of the spudgers to open up a tablet looking thing. I think the one I get the most use of is the black stick. So the black plastic stick can go into small gaps. The metal spudger is tough for prying and the flat scraper is for scraping and cleaning. Helps you take apart devices without damage. And unplugging connectors it looks like. And the spudgers took four weeks to get here. This is called One Model Parts. I don't know what that means. And I'm having trouble finding a way into this. It's a box in a bag. And in the box we have an LED ring and a happy note. I'm going to have to cut into this with surgical precision, but not very much dexterity. Try again. Oh yeah. So there we go, an LED ring and the connections. So using my spudging pointer, this is the 2812B LED driver. We have data in, 5 volts ground, and data out. So you can put a connector on here and talk to this and control it, and pass on the data to someone else. I don't know where my LED strips are that I ordered, but this ring was ordered more recently, so I'm glad I have it. WS2812B5050 RGB LED ring, 16-bit RGB LED plus integrated drivers, 68 millimeters for Arduino. $2.62 US from Kang Bao U005. So this is a rather popular interface, this WS2812B. The diameter of this LED ring is 68 millimeters. There are several ones, I just wanted something I could afford and something I could just play around with. And these LEDs are driven by this chip. They run on 5 volts and you just use the one data line to control multiple LEDs. You can adjust the brightness, three colors, 256 levels. And I haven't played around with this interface yet and I've ordered other LEDs with this interface. I'm just waiting. So this is the first one I got. This one took six weeks to get here. There's others I've ordered longer ago, which means I probably have them. I just don't know which envelope they are in. I'll have to wait until I uncover them to try them out. This one's called Game Accessory, which I, as usual, have no recollection of what it might be. And it could always be anything. It could be a bunch of capacitors. So, um, magnets. Let's see what we have here. 
I'm assuming these are neodymium, because for one thing, I can barely get them apart. Ooh, they spin around, though. Maybe you have to twist and then get some leverage. Okay. Oh, got it apart. Uh, I could put them under this table and control this. Now, this table's about a centimeter thick. Whoa! Magic tricks! <laughs> I will read your fortune. Whoa! <laughs> oh, this, this, this can go bad real fast. Okay. Oh, whoa! Let go! Let go! Wah! Whoa! <laughs> Let's put that there. And that there. Well, now that my desk is cleaned up, I have access to my caliper. Let's measure these magnets, if I can get one. Separated. Okay. These are 9.5 millimeters wide. Nineteen point three seven millimeters long. One point seven nine millimeters thick. And they are keeping me from separating this. Sort of. So, how does the auction information stack up? Various options of size of magnet and quantity of magnets. Disc, round, rare, earth, neodymium, strong magnets, craft, model. You can get rectangles or circles, and some things are out of stock here. I got the 10 by 20 by 2 millimeter rectangles. Since I bought 10 of these and it's out of stock, I can't select it to see the price. 20 of these would have been five dollars and nineteen cents Canadian. So ten of these is about half as much. From Buy Easy AU. Super strong rare earth magnets. Once they get stuck with each other they're hard to break apart. Yes I have seen that but they are easy to break on each other. And as with the other magnets I bought, they say that they are electrically conductive. You can use them to extend batteries where you need to make up the gap between a battery and a contact point. These magnets took eight weeks to get here. Well, this has been a productive day. We got three spudgers, an LED ring, a 4x4 matrix keypad, some strong magnets, and a caliper that I was able to unearth. I believe I once mentioned these magnets break easily. Well, when I was docking this one magnet, part of it broke. Need to be very careful with these. So once again, if you need a couple, you order a couple more. And then a couple more just in case. I am totally not used to having this much space. A good day indeed.